Because you got to remember, everybody who spends your money don't care that it's your money because it's not it's not their problem. They don't they're disconnected from you and me, from our lives. They're disconnected. They're disconnected from our own way of spending and our home household budgets. They don't they don't make the money that you and I do. They make hundreds of thousands of dollars and rub elbows with other millionaires that don't have a clue about the struggles of yours and mine throughout the day after day after day grind, going to work, coming to home, having to feed our families, having to pay bills, just trying to make it, to make the ends meet. And yet they want to go and spend more money, millions of dollars. putting. This is Dan Gritzko and I'm looking at what I think is the most incredible artwork in American history, certainly in the last 75 years. This is a poster from 1943 when Norman Rockwell tried to depict the freedom of speech and he thought how would he depict freedom of speech? To do that, he chose to take a man who had an opposing view from the people that were in the crowd. And if you look at this, people are looking at him respectfully. They're listening to his dissenting viewpoint. And as they do, they allow him to be a part of the dialogue. This is, to me, an incredible explanation of a definition of the freedom of speech. This is a larger concept that came from a speech from President FDR in 1941. And when Rockwell did this depiction for the Saturday Evening Post, this is actually an original copy of that that was part of the War Department. And it was reminding our soldiers and our nation in the middle of World War II of the importance of fighting for the freedoms that are defined in our Declaration of Independence, protected throughout our history, and again, depicted very beautifully. This incredible, incredible artwork is one that's important for us also to remember today. Hello, El Paso. We got to talk, guys. I'm a little pissed off about something and we need to talk about it. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the news about the, the park they want to build downtown in the overpass. All the overpasses that are downtown, they want to expand down there. They want to expand. They want to close all the overpasses off downtown and put a park downtown that's going to cover several streets. They're claiming it is, it's going to bring businesses downtown. It's going to bring attractions downtown. It's going to bring life downtown. This government, local, federal, state, is ridiculous. They're spending so much of your money that it's killing you guys. It's killing all of us. The city is absurd with their spending and yet they continue to promote this type of spending. They continue to promote all kinds of spending which in turn is causing your taxes to go up and hurting your families. They want to build this park downtown. I can't remember what article it was. Veronica Escobar is all proud because she was able to get so and so many hundreds of thousands of dollars to come to El Paso so they could build a park downtown over I-10 like they have in Dallas or Kinsari, whatever, wherever the hell the city they have it. Like if we actually can benefit the way those economies benefit, it doesn't work here. The question you have to ask yourself about this park downtown, just like the park of every damn park in this city, who's paying for the maintenance of that park? You and me, all of us are paying for the maintenance of these parks. And if you understand when COVID hit, all the parks got shut down. Why is that? Because they didn't have revenue to take care of the parks. Now they want to build a big ass park downtown, sitting on the overpasses of downtown. Who do you think is going to maintain that park? TxDOT? No, it's going to be a city park that's going to maintain it. So where are they going to get the money to maintain this downtown park? From you and me again. From our tax dollars, they're gonna. If your taxes haven't increased already, if your rent hasn't increased already, if your bills haven't increased already, if your shopping bill hasn't increased, everything is increasing. But yet, this city continues to spend money, like it, like it's just growing on the trees or in the desert of here in El Paso, and, and we cannot afford it. And now you're seeing Veronica Escobar getting in there and paying back her donors, because you got to remember, everybody who spends your money don't care that it's your money because it's not 
it's not their problem. They don't, they're disconnected from you and me, from our lives. They're disconnected. They're disconnected from our own way of spending and our home household budgets. They don't, they don't make the money that you and I do. They make hundreds of thousands of dollars and rub elbows with other millionaires that don't have a clue about the struggles of yours and mine throughout the day after day after day grind, going to work, coming to home, having to feed our families, having to pay bills, just trying to make it, to make the ends meet. And yet they wanna go and spend more money, millions of dollars, putting into a park, a, a park downtown. <laughs> so that's gonna come out of your pocket. So your taxes are gonna go up even more than they already have. That's the problem here. That's the part I'm trying to say is these cities, especially El Paso, especially some of these crooked people on the council, they don't care how much this stuff costs. All they care about is pleasing the people who have paid for their campaigns, which are the developers. And Veronica Escobar is one of them. If you don't think the developers locally contributed to Veronica Escobar's campaign, then you're mistaken and you're blind. If you don't think a lot of these council members, which I highlight to you all the time, are getting paid from these developers, you gotta believe it. These people who get elected, they're not on your team, guys. They, they throw you crumbs, but they take wads of money from these rich developers who don't give a rat's ass about your livelihood. They don't give a damn. And this message that I continue to deliver that people don't understand the message I'm trying to convey after years of saying the same thing over and over. The spending is catching up. That's why your taxes are going up. Why do you think the whole country's in disarray? It's not only COVID, man. But COVID showed and revealed. COVID showed us and revealed the issues of our economy. El Paso seems to think we're already done with COVID. Not, not the people. I'm talking the government, the, the local government. Watch city council and watch the spending they continue to do. They, they act like everybody's bounced back 100%. And ha even when we were at 100%, El Pasoans were struggling to make ends meet. And now we're struggling even more, but they don't give a damn. They're gonna build the park downtown anyways. And that's going to cost you millions of dollars, each one of you. Your, your children, if they, they, they I don't, I'm surprised. If, if you're not telling your children to leave El Paso, then I don't, I don't know what's, what's wrong. Because El Paso is a, is a money pit. Everything El Paso, the city of El Paso does, costs us millions of dollars. From the stadium, to the streetcar, to these water parks they just built. I'm going to, you can list almost everything that this city does and you will find everything that the city does listed out over the last decade and you will find that it has lost money that it's oh it's not generating any revenue we've proven it by the lack of population growth el paso didn't grow in the last decade and that's because nobody's coming here nobody can handle these the taxes for what the salaries are here in this city nobody's going to come here Businesses are not gonna start here just because, without the government giving them money. If your government has to give you money as a business to open up in this city, then that means you are not, it's not viable for the, the corporation to do it by themselves. It means there's no money here. So they're doing, they're, quote, they're doing themselves a favor. They're making a lot of money off of El Paso but they're not putting anything back into El Paso except through salaries and, and wages, which does not counter the amount of discounts and tax credits they get from the local government. If we give them a, say a business comes in and we give them a $30 million subsidy and, and now they, they don't have to worry about it, they don't have to pay taxes for 30 years. That's a lot more money than that's coming back into El Paso from the employees paying, doing things, because a lot of employees, that money goes other places. We buy online, we do all kinds of things. So it's not coming back to our economy. So we're losing money with every single thing this city council does, including this park, there's a park thing, a park downtown 
They're going to spend millions of dollars between the state, local, and federal. They're going to close out. They're going to make a park. When you go downtown, they're going to cover that park. I mean, those overpasses that you pass, Mesa, Santa Fe, Campbell, those, the top of that is going to be a park. A park. We can't even afford to, to maintain the parks we have now, let alone a park downtown. It's going to be mo millions of dollars worth. It's, it's, it's obscene what this city council is doing. It's obscene what this local government's doing. But El Pasoans don't understand that uh, for the most part because they don't see the whole picture until it's too late, which is what I continue to say over and over and over. You're not going to see the pain now. You're going to see it in a few years when your tax rate increases. Ever since the 2012 Quality of Life bond, when everybody was saying, oh, right, we're going to get all these things. Nothing is for free, man. Now that, now that COVID pretty much uh, killed our economy a lot, it hurt us. We, will, we won't rebound for another few years. Don't be deceived. It's going to be quite a few years. Now they're going to say, well, everything's back to normal. We're feeling better, so we can afford to put a park now downtown. Oh, my God, man. I'm losing my mind, guys. I'm losing my mind with the stupidity of this city council. You only have a couple of people on there with any sense. The majority of the council doesn't care. They don't care about your pockets they don't care about your bank accounts they don't care about what ultimately happens behind the doors of your house how you feed your family they don't care because the answer is we'll just go out and give you free food because that's how it's going to work we're going to get people to donate and you're going to be able to line up in a, in a mile long line and get a box of food because we did it for covid who cares we don't care how your wallets are being affected by our spending and you guys are the ones suffering. I'm the one suffering because of the stupid decisions that this government makes. Now, how do you wake up, man? You gotta wake up. You gotta look at the, the people who are doing the spending. Man, Cassandra Hernandez, I'm gonna call him out. You got Peter Schwartzwein, who's a damn spender. Now you can put the social issues aside. I don't, I don't care what your social issue is. I don't care if you're gay, straight, fat, skinny. I don't give a damn what that is. Because in the long run, what happens is these people use those things to win your vote and turn around and spend your money and spend a lot of your money. And you end up losing in the long run because you voted for social issues and not thinking about where it really counts in your bank accounts in your how you make ends meet for your family that's what they do it's a tactic they use your emotions to get them to vote and then they spend all your money and then they use your emotions to vote next time and then they spend your money and then they use your vote. it's a cycle and we've got to break away from that cycle if we're going to save el paso first of all and our families because these people are so disconnected they're afraid of the developer money going to another candidate so they take Paul Foster's money they take Woody Hunt's money now it's not a coincidence if you drive downtown and you look at the new <clears throat> the new tower they built and you look if you if you stop and pull over and you look up at that tower you'll see a balcony like close to the top why do you think that balcony is there so they can look at the freeway no they knew this park was coming they pulled strings Paul Foster's got his hands in everything He's got his hands in the state government. He's got his hands in the UT system. He's got his hands everywhere because he's got so much money and influence. And he's bought these people out in the local government. He's bought these people out at the state government. Somebody made a comment earlier on one of the on one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, news articles about this park downtown. They said, "Aren't aren't they um, aren't they Republicans?" You know, as far as like the, the developers, Republicans, and why is, you know, Veronica, why are they giving money or whatever, fighting for it? It's, it doesn't matter. That's what people need to understand. The political party doesn't matter to the rich. Okay? Let me repeat that again. The rich people don't care about political party. They use political party to get you to vote for them so they can turn around and do the bidding of the rich people the ones like the developers and that's where we have to wake up el paso because paul foster and woody hunt these guys are straight up causing your pockets to get emptied 
stupid things like the and, and people say, well, does 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 Paul Foster have anything to do with the, the park? It doesn't matter. I guarantee you there's a connection behind it for Paul Foster and Woody Hunt and they're developing plans. I guarantee it. There's also another article saying that Woody Hunt wants to build this water like like I don't know, some kind of lake on the east side to get people to come. Guys, none of this stuff is done out of the goodness of their hearts. There's always money involved. It's leverage. It's buying out people. How do you think Paul Foster got all that land in the Northeast in that crooked deal with the Great Wolf Lodge? How do you think he got that? <clears throat> because he paid for the campaigns of the people who voted to approve it. Understand very clearly and I'm gonna say that loud again and I don't I don't people say man you're afraid I don't care listen Paul Foster and Woody Hunt get everything they want in this city because they bought the candidates and they bought the people who are sitting on city council who are voting for everything they want that's politics it doesn't matter Paul Foster's a Republican the people he bought are Democrats Paul Foster doesn't care about pol pol political party as long as he gets what he wants and that continues to happen. And that's where we're at again today. That that little park is this, remember downtown is their little sandbox. El Paso is their sandbox. And they're playing this game with millions of dollars with our money. And we let it happen because we're too stupid to understand what they're doing. I, I could say this stuff till I'm blue in the face. If you don't understand the way it works, you'll never understand how it's taken, it's like they're taking a dollar away from you. Oh, it's only a dollar, okay. Here's another dollar. Oh, we gotta raise taxes, there's another dollar. Oh, your your water bill's gotta go up because of the, the public water board. Okay, now we got. oh, now we gotta raise you another fee because of the rain. Oh, now we gotta do this. Guys, it's all a weave together behind in the back end. And it, it's more than just a utility screwing you. It's a rich developer that's caused this domino effect that's caused these prices to increase, which caused you to lose more money. And it all starts by the way you vote. If you voted for Cassandra Hernandez in any election, you are part of the problem. You, 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 you did not know, but you inadvertently have caused your own taxes to go up. If you voted for Peter Schwartzwein in any election, you inadvertently caused your taxes to go up. If you voted for Sissy Lizarraga in downtown, you have voted for your taxes to go up. If you have voted, I can go on and on. The only two that if you voted for Claudia Rodriguez and Joe Molinar in District 6 and 4, then you voted to keep your taxes low. Because they haven't approved one CO, they haven't approved one bond, nothing. But any other others, Isabel Salcedo in District 5, if you voted for Isabel Salcedo because she's your buddy, or because you think she's pretty, or whatever other reason, you voted for your taxes to go up. If you voted for Henry Rivera, because he's a nice guy, and he's a Democrat buddy of yours, you voted for your taxes to go up. I can go on and on and on and on and on. Everybody has to wake up and learn how to vote for the right people. And just, you gotta just listen. You gotta put emotion, you got to put things aside. You got to put friendships aside when you vote for people. Because these are the reasons why things like a park downtown, although it sounds like a great idea, you can't afford it. We cannot afford it. That's the problem. We can't afford these things. They're nice. But we are not Austin. We are not Dallas. We cannot afford this stuff. We cannot afford a tax rate increase, which they have to do. Because the only way they maintain the parks is with tax money. And they can barely afford to take care of the parks they have now. So they're going to raise taxes so they can pay, take care of that park downtown. Don't buy the nonsense as to how they claim they're going to fund that maintenance. I guarantee you it's going to cost. Just like the maintenance of, of the Chihuahua Stadium. How many of you know that the Chihuahua Stadium... Every year is a maintenance contract that we agree to, the people of El Paso, and we have to pay, which over the next few years is going to be three or four million dollars over the course. So every year, a million or so of our dollars is going into that uh, that downtown uh, uh, baseball field. Did you know that? You probably didn't. 
So the, gen the, the money generated from ticket sales and whatever event is not enough because we still pay for maintenance of that stadium. And so you're losing money every year because of that stadium. And you're, you're, that means your taxes go up every year because we have to pay out of your taxes to maintain that stadium. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be the hotel occupancy tax. And you're right, but it's not enough. We've got a deal on the table where we pay for the maintenance of the, of, of the park and it comes out of your tax dollars. Don't be deceived. So the original post of this, of this conversation was supposed to be about that park downtown that they're gonna build. You're gonna see your taxes have to go up because they have to pay money to maintain that park. These medians on these streets, the beautiful cactus, the beautiful landscaping. Just a few years ago, a deal was made. TxDOT, the Texas Department of Transportation was gonna fund, and they did. They funded the maintenance of these road medians, these beautiful road medians that you have in your house and you're down your street neighborhood. Well, a few years ago, TxDOT couldn't afford it anymore. So now, El Paso taxpayers have to pay for the maintenance of these road medians. El Paso got themselves screwed again. There's nothing wrong with beautifying your neighborhood, but when it costs you an arm and a leg in maintenance fees that comes out of you and yours and my pockets, that's where the problem lies. So many families are barely trying to make it, trying to rebound from COVID, but we got that expense on us. We're gonna have now another, who knows, God knows how much that park is gonna cost to maintain, but that, that bill is gonna be put on your shoulders. Every damn thing that this city does, it doesn't work, it costs you money. Every damn thing, every project. I sit on a committee in the city that talks about building water towers in these new, in these new uh, developments. These uh, these sprawl zones, and guess what? <laughs> a bunch of those projects are way over budget, as typical for El Paso. So you got to understand, whenever these El Paso, the uh, the city council starts dangling some carrot, this is a great idea for a city. I promise you, a hundred percent, that your taxes are going to go up because they need to fund the maintenance. Always remember that if you don't understand. Anything that the city puts money into the brain to, to do anything, it requires maintaining and it requires a lot of money from your pockets to keep it running, to keep it healthy, if you will. These water parks, it, it costs money to maintain. The revenue generated by the water parks does not offset that maintenance, does not upset, offset the maintenance cost. So every time something's built, the maintenance is more than the, tax, the revenue that it generates, and that means you have to pay more taxes to maintain it. It's just that simple. And I could show you repeatedly. Every, I could, you, you name something El Paso has built in the last decade that's designed to bring in revenue, I'll show you how it loses revenue. I'll show you how their investment, they say, oh, this is gonna be an investment going forward. It's gonna take 30 years to pay that debt off. In 30 years, that whatever they built is not usable anymore. They got to destroy it and rebuild it because th these things are just designed that way. A lot of properties, a lot of things you build today are not like they were built in the 1900s, that they were meant to last for hundreds of years. These water parks are going to have to be rebuilt in 20 years. Why? Because it's, it's wear and tear and that cost, you're never going to pay back the cost of those water parks ever because it's a constant expenditure so you know i'm 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 you know <laughs> i'm ranting here because i'm pissed every time i turn around there's a new expenditure and it's a big one and guess who pays for it me and you and every other el pasoan who eyes get all, all glittery and happy because it's something new and shiny and then we get our tax bill in the mail or our rent and our, and our apartment goes up and we're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why did my rent go up? Well, how's that water park treating you? How's that water park treating you? You wanted the water park, right? You voted yes, didn't you? Yeah, well, that's why your, your taxes went up. <laughs> oh, that, that downtown park is beautiful. I love it. I go there once like twice a year. Oh, you go twice a year. <laughs> well, good. 
because now you're paying for it with your taxes. How, how you like it? Yep. Go enjoy that park a little bit more. How, how's that library treating you? Well, the library is something the city has to invest in to keep the people educated, to help people educate. But a, a park downtown? What are we, like New York now, where we need like some park in the, in, 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 in the middle of the city? We, we don't, we don't, we can't afford that. We're not bringing in the revenue that the people of New York bring in. And if you look at New York City, you'll see how much debt they're in and how high their taxes are. So if you want to try to emulate a city, New York, Austin, and all these cities that are heavily taxed, you probably don't want to emulate those types of cities because you're going to hurt your people, especially your people like El Paso, where 40% of the population median income is like $40,000. Right, it's just kind of like common sense kind of stuff, but I guess common sense is not common in in, in government. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's my rant. If you if you came in late, go back and watch the beginning. I'm ranting about the park downtown. If you haven't seen it, scan through KVIA, uh, El Paso Times, or whatever, and you'll find uh, the article about Veronica Escobar bragging about how she got money from the federal government to chip in. It doesn't matter. I don't give a I don't give a damn if if somebody buys the whole park and a private company gives us a donation. The 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 problem is the maintenance of it. We have to maintain it. That's the biggest problem. We have to maintain that park. We can't afford to maintain another monster park downtown El Paso cuz you know it's going to be more than a park. You know this city splurges when they try they, they didn't put that balcony because they wanted to see the mountain. They put that balcony because they want to see the park that they're going to build. This is how it works. This shit's been in development for, for years. For years. Okay? This has been a, this developed. So this is nothing, not a surprise. What surprises me is now the federal government and Veronica Escobar is bragging about getting money so they could put more... Bur uh, hey, El Paso, guess what? I got $900,000 for your park downtown that you're going to have to pay more tax for. How do you like that? How, how, does that make you guys happy? You're going to have to pay more taxes now because I thought this was a good idea. And good for you guys. Now you get to pay more. Even if you don't use the park, you never use the park, you're going to have to pay taxes for it. <laughs> That's the message of the night, guys. Anything the city does, it comes out of your pockets. It doesn't come out of their pockets. It comes out of yours. All right. Talk to you later, guys. Have a great day. Share, like, do whatever you got to do. It's just a, a 5 o'clock rant. And I might start doing more of these 5 o'clock rants because... I get to get my mind clear and, and share with you what's happening with these corrupt city council members. All right. Peace out. Have a good night. Hit me up. If you have any questions, talk to you later. Bye-bye.